everyone. My name is Corey Dowds. Today is, uh, we're in the Diwali time right now. It's November 2020, November 15th. So happy Diwali to everyone. Happy new moon in Scorpio. Happy Dakshinayana. We're in the Dakshinayana, which is the time when the sun is moving south. It's the best time to do spiritual practices, to meditate, to do mantras, pujas, all kinds of things, penances of all sorts, fasting, what have you. Um, so I advocate that. <laughs> now, um, now we're going to talk about moon conjunct Rahu. I made a video about moon conjunct K2 the other day. And so now I'm going to kind of balance that out by making a video about moon conjunct Rahu. Now moon conjunct K2, K2 is what we've done really well from past lives. So that's someone who's really developed mentally and internally. Rahu with the moon shows someone who hasn't been developing the moon side of life very much. What could that mean? Well, just think about the things that the moon represents and then study a lot of charts that have this and you will notice a lot of interesting you know, correlations where um, you know, the moon has to do with getting our needs met and getting our being in a flow of prosperity, um, being able to get what we need when we need it is considered to be true prosperity pro spirit is what the word prosperity really is is pro spirit um when you have a really healthy moon you feel connected to life and your entire emotional and mental body acts in such a way where it's open and receptive and flexible where you attract a lot of prosperity you just tend to attract what you need when you need it um when the moon is with Rahu, you could imagine there might be some difficulty there. One maybe hasn't developed that side of life as much from past lives. Now, what's cool is that whether you're male or female, this placement means that one is not as close to the feminine side of life, the divine feminine, the yin aspect of life. How do we, what does that actually mean? Well, to define this in occult terms, not in societal or cultural terms, or whatever, but in literal occult mathematical principles, that which reaches out is considered to be masculine. That which awaits the reaching is considered to be feminine. That which is of a positive polarity would be masculine. That which is of a negative polarity would be feminine. Now, it's kind of funny because you hear a lot about the divine feminine, but you never hear about the divine masculine at least in society at this time, but we actually desperately need that. Um, and this is why we have a lot of man-childs around in the world, because we don't have a lot of good divine masculine, a lot of good healthy father figures, a lot of good healthy um, solar aspects. It's These things are both really important. So if you, we're not doing a video on the sun right now, but if you have the sun with Rahu, that's a person who needs to develop the divine masculine. They need to be more consistent, more disciplined, do what they say they'll do when they say it or whatever. Moon Rahu is more developing the feminine side of life. It's not so much about doing, doing, doing. It's more about how are you feeling? Are you just able to love yourself regardless of what you do or achieve or don't do? There's a part of us that just needs to be loved. And it's not, it doesn't need to be loved because of anything it does or any utility. The moon just goes out and shines. Like the moon doesn't make the day. The moon doesn't create life or the world, or it creates a tide so it grows life, but it doesn't even have any light of its own. And it doesn't um, consistently make the day happen like the sun. The sun is doing all this stuff, but if you look at the sun, it's like, ah, you'll go blind if you even look at it for more than a moment. That's more like the divine masculine. Um, men truly healthy masculine people don't need a lot of ego validation they like to just okay the sun saved the day good you read it in the newspaper done they don't need to be like oh look at you you're so great son for saving the day and all they don't need all this lovey-dovey emotional stuff then switch it and look at think about the moon you see a full moon two weeks from now at nighttime it just goes out there and it's just adorable it's just really just how could you not adore it it's not because it did anything or achieved anything or attained anything it's just needs to be loved it's just lovable why would you not love it and that is what the divine feminine has to do with so the reason i'm bringing this up is because basically this placement um 
is a placement that can make one get caught up in not realizing the, the need for receptivity where they cannot really realize that they're doing a little too much um, or they're too focused on doing, depending on what K2 is saying, but Moon Rahu is saying, learn to just accept, learn to abide, learn to just be. So the Moon conjunct Rahu is a placement where you're gonna be afraid to just be yourself, to put it simply. I hope this now makes sense because there's a fear about just being that, that shining full moon. Um, one can be afraid that they're not gonna get their emotional needs met. Um, and so then they just never even want to express them or even go into their emotional realm. And so depending on your K2 and the rest of your chart, this is a placement where as you get older, you'll ha you kind of almost have to retrain or reprogram yourself to be more emotional and to literally be in your emotions and be in your feelings more and more. But one doesn't always really want to do that when they have moon with Rahu. The Rahu, like we talk about, my teacher always says Rahu is like this unknown jungle. It's like this jungle realm. K2 is like this castle. You're hidden, your castle of your security paradigm, your castle of imperfections that you think are perfect. Um, Rahu is going to basically pull you out of that. With the moon there, you actually get forced into the scary, uh, the bizarre, the, the uncomfortable very early in life too. So these people, we usually have a lot of things early on in life that are just not supportive or not very like nourishing. They don't have, there's something about that moon element of life that's kind of jarring and to get their nourishment, to get their moon, to get the mother, the mother is out there in the jungle. So it's really a scary placement to have. Um, though this is a person that's longing to connect, but is kind of like afraid to connect. And so they never really easily reach out to connect. And so this is one of the deepest aspects of this placement. You'll see a lot of people with this placement if you're a counselor and these people should get a lot of counseling and, and, and therapy and sessions where they can formally and officially just vent all their emotions. They really need that. Um, and it's, so one of the main things that, you know, I always advocate if you've had a reading with me and you have this placement, or if just in general, if you have this place where no someone does, you want to really train yourself to just express those first feelings, those first initial feelings that you have, not your second feeling, not your third feeling. Express your first emotion about a thing and get in the habit of that. But you'll find that it is scary. And if you really analyze yourself, you'll find that I am uh, hesitating to express that. And then I'm hesitating more and more and then I don't even know what I really feel anymore. Um, or I'm just expressing what I think others might want me to feel. And so, yeah, that's the thing is like, it's uh, the moon is that loving nourishment. It could just feel like there's no chance of being loved with this placement, you know? And so it's so hard to open up because you have to open up to be loved. You know what I mean? And so this is a very tough placement. It can really feel like no one, no one loves us. You know what I mean? When we have this placement um, and that is, that is our, our difficult task, our difficult jungle of Rahu is going through that emotional realm and just like crying and just like letting ourselves be in that place more, you know? Um, and it feels like it's just going into a scary place whenever you start to get into a certain emotional place. Um, you can be paralyzed. There's people who can, who can be paralyzed without being able to speak due to emotion or something. Um, they can have this placement. One of the best things though is uh, Mercury, a strong Mercury really helps balance out this. Now also, just to be fair, you know, if you read the old books like B.B. Rahman, he'll straight up say this placement makes you insane. Doesn't make you insane, but if you also had a really afflicted Mercury, those are both the plants of the mind, then it can lead to mental issues. Oh, it's raining around me right now. You guys can't tell because I'm in outer space, <laughs> but uh, okay, so you, you really do want to have a good Mercury and you want to augment Mercury or Moon stuff if you have this Mercury in an angle from Rahu or just a good dignified Mercury or even a Mercury near this Rahu can be very helpful. Um, and when just so you know, just in general, it's a yoga when you have Moon and Mercury both afflicted, that's a major yoga for mental illness. So this is one way that can happen. Um, now, 
it this can also be a major placement for like drinking or drugs you know because that's the thing is like having a drink can make it a little bit easier for these people to express their emotions so on some level it's not really even bad if they for them to if they're too uptight it might be helpful for them to you know have a drink once in a while or something when they're around us when they're in a social situation or something where it where it would be appropriate but they have to be very careful because they can get it they can get addicted to that feeling or that quality or need that in order to be able to express and that's dangerous um but yeah, it can be a big, a big placement for anything that helps it makes it easier for one to express their feelings. Um, and, you know, like I said, this is just if you can, as a counselor, just help guide this person into realizing that no, it's really just that you have to focus on how you're getting your needs met, learn, realizing what your needs are and, and learn how to express them and check in with them and that and, you know, kind of keep focusing them on that that can be really helpful now since the moon is the feminine energy when women have this placement they can come off very masculine they can actually be very very magnetic feminine women that are like really hot and like attractive but it's kind of funny because they're inwardly not that feminine and they're not that in touch with their feminine and their feelings and this is just a very interesting thing. So you'll see a lot of like really famous women. Um, Rahu can kind of project you into fame and things. Um, uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones has this, Paris Hilton has this. She's a great example of someone who's honestly like not really beautiful. If you really try to analyze her, a lot of ways she looks like, like a young boy, like in her figure and stuff, but uh, she just became a sex symbol. You know, and that has a lot to do with that hypnotic Rahu quality that's not really even thinking clearly. Um, uh, Venus Williams has this, um, you know, she's like a symbol of femininity, but at the same time, she's a very aggressive, competitive person who's like really a hardcore solar figure in a lot of ways. Um, I know of uh, other people and stuff in my database and all who are, you know, kind of like famous or uh, very attractive, powerful kind of female women who have this placement. Um, oh, Tulsi Gabbard, the presidential candidate who uh, truly deserves the Sanskrit name she has, um, unlike some other candidates who have Sanskrit names. Um, she is a really, really great, uh, she's a really great strong being, but you can tell that Moon and Rahu because she's like, she's just such a hardcore achieving politician. She was a military combat veteran, you know, like for, for a female, she's like such an achiever that um, you can see that there's a little bit of that moon Rahu going on where maybe if she didn't have that, she would have, who knows, maybe not accomplished as much, but um, well, I guess you could see that this placement can be, have good and bad to it. Um, it probably made her a lot more famous to have that moon Rahu placement, but she probably has more difficulty with embracing her feminine side at the end of the day after being such an accomplished achieving person. Um, so if you're a woman that has this placement, it's, uh, you know, it's really just, I know it sounds maybe like a cliche platitude, but you really have to get in touch with your feminine side. You know what I mean? And actually go out of your way to do that and actually go and watch videos about that and read books about that. And you know what I mean? And actually engage in this. You won't think it, but it's the truth. Um, now with men's charts, you it can make them really like soft and gentler and less masculine um, or quieter. Um, it can actually make men gay a lot of times or be sort of just non-binary on some level, um, more on the spectrum. It makes uh, men more, well, like, um, uh, okay, the Tiger King. The guy, uh, Joe Exotic, he has the moon conjunct Rahu. So he's a good example of someone who was propelled into fame and someone who like is also gay and is someone who as from watching the, the Netflix documentary about this Joe Exotic guy, he's very emotionally toxic and emotionally confused. And, and you know, he has a lot of these moon Rahu issues going on. Um, now yeah um there are a lot more of the 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 mentally ill people that you can find that have this up saddam hussein had this um the son of sam guy had this charles manson had this uh 
J.D. Salinger had this, who had a lot of issues, um, the author of Catcher in the Rye. Um, Robin Williams had this, and he committed suicide, you know, so couldn't find, couldn't get his needs met, you know, um, couldn't reach out, no one even knew, you see, like he couldn't express, even begin to express it. Um, and the heron just, just called out, I don't know if you guys heard that or not. Um, you know, Luther Burbank, the famous horticulturalist, who was a great friend of Yogananda, considered like Yogananda would call him America's greatest saint. Uh, he had Moon Rahu and he was such a, you know, nurturer, plant person. He was so soft and had such an pronounced feminine side. Um, Hunter S. Thompson, completely insane. Um, he had displacement. Tom Cruise. A lot of people say Tom Cruise is really gay on the inside. You didn't hear it from me or, you know, I can't say that's true or not. That's just what people say. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of examples of people who have this placement. Um, yeah, so Moon and Rahu is really, really fascinating. It's like this polar opposite of Moon and K2. I hope you guys, uh, hope this helps for you guys. All right, take care.